Hi friends, welcome back to Faith and Arrow Homestead. My name is Jaylee and today I'm going to show you how to make apple butter since I did put out the um, apple butter cookie mix and suggested you give it as gifts. I thought I'd go ahead and show you how to make apple butter if you have not already done it, don't know how to do it, but you're interested. Now I have this book, the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. I think there are more than one versions of this, but this is the one that I have. I'll link it down in the description. And when I was going through to see what the different types of butter, uh, fruit butters they have, they have a sweet apple cider butter. And it just so happens that I do have some apple cider in my fridge that needs to get used up. So we're gonna make apple, sweet apple cider butter. Um, but I believe, I think you can probably just take out the apple cider. Let me make sure that that's true. So I also have this book, the blue, the ball blue book guide to preserving, and it has an apple butter recipe and it is slightly different than this one. So I'll see what I can find online. Both of these recipes come from ball. They're not mine. So I'll see what I can find online and I will put the link to both of them down in the description. But today we are gonna make the sweet apple cider butter. I'm making these to go in the um, apple butter cookie mix gift bags that I'm giving for Christmas. So I just thought the sweet apple cider sounded like a way to spice it up a little bit more and make it just that much tastier and I love that idea. So we're gonna go for it. Now, we need six pounds of apples peeled cored and quartered. Now I have this device for my KitchenAid mixer. I'll also have this linked down in the description. I love this thing. You'll hear varying things about being very specific when you are canning because you need the acidity level to be correct. You really need things to be correct when you're canning for a food safety reason. I have never before measured anything from a weight standpoint when canning, but I have this kitchen scale now that I didn't have last season. And this says to do six pounds of apples, cored, um, peeled, and quartered. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and as I do them, put them in this bowl so that I can keep up with how much I have. just like that comes out looking really nice all right I have my big enameled cast iron Dutch oven full of my apples over here I'm going to pour in two cups of apple cider I'm going to turn the heat on high medium well medium high and I'm going to let this come up to a boil this is very clearly boiling, even though I can't really see the liquid, I can hear it. And so I'm gonna turn this down to medium, medium low, and I'm going to let this simmer for roughly 30 minutes, but really what you're looking for, you want your apples to be nice and soft. The recipe says to blend this up using a blender or a food processor. I have neither, but I do have my stick blender, my immersion blender. So I'm gonna use this to go in here and it says not to liquefy. Um, so it's not quite looking for like an applesauce consistency, something right before applesauce. All right, I don't wanna go much more than that because it is already kind of looking like applesauce, but oh, it looks and smells so good. Yeah, I think that's a good consistency. Next, we're going to add three cups of sugar. Don't get hung up on the sugar. This is a treat item. It's not something that you're eating all the time and you're eating it in moderation and in small quantities. Items like this, I'm not afraid of adding the sugar because for those reasons I just stated. You want one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon and you want half a teaspoon of cloves, which makes me so excited because you guys know I love cloves. I love the little bit of subtle spice that it gives and I just think it is so flavorful. 
We're going to go ahead and get all that mixed together. All right, once it's all nice and combined, we're just going to bring it right back over to the stove. I only brought it over here because I need to plug my immersion blender in and I don't have a plug by the stove. Otherwise I would have just left it on the stove. Okay, we are back over on the stove. I just turned the heat on to medium high and we're going to bring this to a boil. You wanna make sure that you're stirring frequently because there's quite a big of, bit of sugar in here and you do not want it to um, burn or bubble over. All right, now that this is boiling, we're gonna turn the heat down to medium low and we're gonna let it do a gentle boil until it is the thickness that we want. Now here's how you tell that. You take a spoon you, and you get a spoonful of it and if, it's, if it is thick and it stays, holds its shape on the spoon, then it's good. And if it spreads out like say an applesauce, then it is not good. But I will show you what it looks like and I will tell you how long it took me to get there. You wanna make sure that you're stirring somewhat consistently during this process because you don't want it to burn or stick or have any issues. It is the next day. Uh, Tom and I ended up going out of the house last night and so I just let it cool on the stove and then I stuck it in the fridge and I warmed it back up this morning. I made a mistake uh, and I'm actually pretty legitimately upset about this mistake but and I'm embarrassed to share it but I have to because I don't want this to happen to anybody else. I set my I got my apple butter on the stove and I put it to medium which if you have gas is like pretty pretty hot and then I sat down to do my Bible reading this morning um, I thought because it was in the fridge that it was gonna take a while to get back up to temperature and I was sitting down for probably 15 somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes and I got up and I came in the kitchen and I could smell like a burning smell burned pretty badly the apple butter itself is fine I have it in a different pot and it's on low and it's been simmering away um, because all I did was pour it out into another container and the stuff that was burnt on the bottom just stayed stuck to the bottom I googled it I did every trick I could find online to try to get this unstuck it is not happening it's it's this is a sugar based product so burnt sugar is really difficult to remove. This is my only cast iron Dutch oven and the reason I'm so upset about it is because we're going camping this weekend and I have like four loaves of sourdough bread to bake. I've got one in the fridge ready to go right now and this is like ruined. So I'm going to still because I've got to bake this loaf of bread so I'm gonna still put this in the so the way I make my sourdough bread I uh, put my Dutch oven in the oven and turn it on to 500 and preheat it and then I take it out put the bread in and put it back in so I'm just gonna I don't know it's probably gonna fill my house with smoke I don't think it'll affect the bread I don't think maybe it'll affect the flavor I don't know I don't know <laughs> mistakes have been made I'm very upset so I'm just gonna give it a shot and see what happens in other news, our apple butter is almost done. I'll show you in a few minutes. I did run the dishwasher this morning and I put my little jelly jars in there so they're sterilized and ready to go. So I'll probably go ahead and get my water bath canner out, fill it with water and let it start coming up to temperature because that thing always takes forever to get to boiling. So I think I'll probably go ahead and do that. Okay, now let's talk about how you know when your apple butter is ready. Now this is a good, better, best situation. Just like with pasta sauce, Guys, we could keep this going forever. This could just cook down and cook down and thicken and thicken and thicken. This, I, I can't, it's hard for me to give you an exact time because of me having to stop and start. I want to say this has been cooking down for about three hours all together, not all at once. Um, and it could go even longer. I think because of me accidentally burning it and it taking as long as it did, I think going forward, I'm going to make my fruit butter in my crock pot. I was looking it up online to see what other people are doing. And it seemed to me that stovetop was actually the least popular option for making fruit butter. So I think that's what I'll do in the future is make it in my crock pot. Now this isn't like, so like I said, it's, it could keep going and get even thicker, but it's not bad. And one of the ways you can tell is the spoon test. 
So I've got my big spoon here. And then you just plop it on there. And do you see how it mostly stayed in one spot? It did not spread out to fill the spoon. It pretty much kept its shape. That's how you know it's a good butter consistency. If this were applesauce and I put a big old spoonful right into the spoon, it would spread out and fill the spoon. So that's just a thickness test you can do to see like where's your thickness at with your fruit butter. So I've got my cute little jelly jars here that we talked about. I'm using those because in the recipe, the apple butter cookie recipe, you need half a cup of apple butter and that's about what these jelly jars are. So I'm going to go through and fill these up, leaving about a half an inch of headspace. All right, I've got these filled up with about an inch of headspace. Now what I do to get the air bubbles out is tap them on the counter and a viewer gave me a great idea for filming when I'm tapping to tap on a towel and it won't make the obnoxious noise because I hate loud noises in YouTube videos. I don't like loud noise in general. So when I'm watching a YouTube video and somebody like runs a saw or a food processor, I hate it. Ooh, it just, ooh, I hate it. So thank you, great tip. So yeah, I just smack it on the counter a couple times and you can see the air bubbles rise up to the top. It also helps it all settle in the jar. So you may need to adjust and add a little bit more product. Now it's always important to clean the rim of your jar, but it's especially important when you are um, working with a sugary product because it's very sticky and can cause issues with your seal. So you wanna just run a damp paper towel along the rim of your jar and make sure that it's free of debris. And then I always use my little tongy tongs and I don't boil my lids, but I do put them um, on in a uh, pot of water just on medium and let them get a little warm. It sterilizes them and also um, helps to soften up that gummy seal. All right, now we're gonna take our rings and place them on just fingertip tight, which means not using the palm, just your fingertips. Tighten it as tight as you can using just your fingertips. That's what that means. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and place these into the canner. You wanna make sure that they're totally covered with water. I usually make sure there's at least an inch above them. And then you want to water bath can, bring it up to a, a good full boil and then process them for 10 minutes. All right, what do you say we test this out and make some cookies? Also, you're seeing so many outfits in this video because I got something on that shirt and I had to change my shirt. So I put an apron on, I'm a mess. All right, so this is the baking mix that we put together in my easy holiday baking mix video. And so I have, I already pulled out the written instructions, which I have a printable on my website now if you wanna give these as gifts. And so down in here, I have the dry mix as well as the cinnamon sugar that goes along with these cookies. So in a, the instructions say to combine your wet ingredients. So I went ahead, I didn't can this one because I knew we were gonna go ahead and use it, but this is a jar's worth of the apple butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that in my, my bowl. I've got a fourth a cup of melted butter, one teaspoon of vanilla, one egg. Let's go ahead and get all of that nice and combined. And then we're going to gradually add in our dry mix. Now this does tend to be a pretty wet dough. So I always recommend putting it in the fridge for at least an hour just to help it kind of firm up a little bit and it makes it a lot easier to work with because you are going to roll these in the cinnamon sugar. So this cookie dough really does end up being kind of sticky. It's been in the fridge for I think almost an hour, but it's still pretty sticky. So some of you might not mind that. I hate my hands being sticky. I cannot stand it. And so I just figured out, I've got my cinnamon sugar here. I've got a cookie scoop. If you just scoop your cookie dough right into the cinnamon sugar, then you can use the sugar to coat the outside of it and make it easier to work with so that you're not getting your hands all sticky with the cookie dough. Also, I have my oven preheated to 375, which this has all been talked about in the easy holiday baking mixes video, but I'm just going through really quickly. Since we made the apple butter, I just wanted to put it all together for you so that you could see it, but it's all really standard stuff. Okay, friends, here are our apple butter cookies. They are absolutely beautiful. I'll go ahead and try one, but this is the third time I'm trying one of these babies on camera. 
Mm -hmm. They're delicious. <laughs> so I ended up with seven little jelly jars. I guess technically eight little jelly jars, right? Because I used one of them to make these cookies. Three half pint jars. And there's like half a jelly jar in the fridge that I'm just going to eat on some toast. And I just wanted to make this video to show you guys how to make fruit butter. I had several people in the comments ask me. Um, and if I'm going to give you a recipe, and I was suggesting giving this as a Christmas gift, because you could put the dry mix as well as the, the fruit butter along with a little baggie of cinnamon sugar and a bag, and it would be such a cute little gift. And I had a lot of people asking about the fruit butter, so I figured I'd come and show you quickly how to do it. I did a lot of fruit butter last year, um, but I definitely, after having my little mishap this time, I'm definitely going to do it in my crock pot from now on. I think that would be a lot easier. Um, I'm, I had people asking me for the salted uh, caramel pear butter recipe. I'm not going to put it in the video today, but I will link it down below in the description if you want to give that one a try. It's so good. And yeah, so thanks for hanging out with me in the kitchen today, you guys. I can't wait to see you in my next video. Have faith and keep moving forward. Bye.